I did not hear the now recording or whatever it says. <laughs> um, but anyway, okay, I think I'm, I think we're recording. Let's see, share my screen, but what exactly do I have on my screen before I start sharing? Gosh, hold on one second, guys. Share screen. Yes, share that one. Okie dokie, back to the top. Okay, so we're going to talk tonight about social media. Um, I have been in a lot of different trainings the last couple of weeks about this same topic. And I was like, you know what, we probably just need to talk about it. Um, because a lot of things have changed in the last couple of years and social media in 2023 looks significantly different than, um, the social media world I've been a part of for a very long time. We shall not name how long. Um, but anyway, so if y'all have any questions at any time, any time, please leave it in the, um, chat and we're just going to roll with it. I did not, I made this PowerPoint. I just got, my fingers are probably like smoking because I just got finished typing the last bit of it. Um, just before I pressed go on the Zoom. So um, I did not do any animation. So when I click the screen, it's like everything I'm going to talk about is going to be right up there at that time. So you may want to take notes, um, <clears throat> but this is going to cause you to, to think a little bit and to definitely have a change in perception of um, what's going on. of how you run your social media. So here we go. Oops. Next, our first first thing is I'm going to be talking predominantly about Instagram and a splash of Facebook because they're owned by the same company and they're run very similarly. Um, these are the two platforms that I am on, um, but you could definitely take some of these ideas and run with it on other platforms such as TikTok or Snapchat or whatever. I don't even know what other ones are out there. Clubhouse is that one. There's a new one apparently that's gaining traction called Lemon 8. I'm just not ready to join another <laughs> social media platform. So we're going to be talking specifically about Instagram and Facebook. But if you're not on those, either one of those, or if you're only on Facebook, not on Instagram, you can definitely apply these to um, other social medias. Okay. So Facebook was never meant to be a selling platform. Um, I have been on Facebook since the year that it debuted in 2004. Yes, I am dating myself. When Facebook first came out, it was a college thing. Um, and you literally had to have a college uh, email address in order to get a um, Facebook. And I remember emailing Facebook myself and being like, can you please add this university? It was a small local university in my um, hometown. I was like, because my best friend wants to get on Facebook. <laughs> and they're not on the list of, P of universities to choose from yet. Can you please add them? So that's how long ago it was that I've been on Facebook. But it was never meant to be a selling platform. It was meant to be a... Um, Facebook, like a yearbook almost, uh, a place to get to know one another. Um, and so anyway, over the years, it's evolved clearly into one of the biggest mega giants out there, but um, it was never meant to be a selling platform. So it was meant to create connections and build, build on relationships to stay in touch with long distance family and friends. And that's still what I use it for today. Yeah, Julie, so you know what I'm talking about, girl. Um, some of the OGs. Um, <clears throat> so that's what we have to keep in mind is it was meant to, to be a space for creating connections, building relationships, keeping in touch with long distance family and friends. Okay. So the direct sales world has always known one thing and that's to sell anywhere, anytime, everywhere, every time, all interactions, just sell all the things. And direct sales has been around. I don't know if you, know, you guys knew this, but Mary Kay itself has been around for over 60 years. Um, there are some other direct sales companies that have been around for like 70 years. So we're talking somewhere between 70 and 80 years old that direct sales has really been like a bigger, um, um, sorry, my CPA is messaging me about taxes. I'm kind of like, um, but I need to pay attention, but, um, taxes. Anyway, I'm going to give y'all my attention. I promise. So, um, we've kind of gotten a bad rap or rap or rep or whatever the word is over the last several years because direct sellers like oh no here she comes selling me something again right and when we are passionate about our products like yeah we want to share it with everybody and yeah we want to make some money too but just over the last probably two decades well especially in the last 
yeah, two decades when social media first started making its comeback or, you know, come out because technically Facebook will be um, 20 years old th later this year into 2004. So since social media first arrived on deck is when direct sales started, started getting a worse name for itself um, in our interactions with people. My cat decided she's going to be noisy. I'm probably muted. <laughs> That's okay, Molly. Um, so <clears throat> in 2020, um, it was really easy for us to sell. So that was only three years ago. It feels like it was just yesterday, but it was three years ago. And in 2020, it was really easy to sell. Like everyone was home. They were bored. They were given extra spending money. Y'all remember the stimulus and things like that. Um, you could post what you ate for dinner and someone would buy Scentsy from you, from that post. Like it was really, it was really easy to sell in 2020. Um, so there's a lot of people I'm, I'm looking at names right now on this call that joined in 2020 and came out of the gates like guns blazing and were fan. I mean, and they're, and they're still great today. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just, I'm just saying, I think the people that you know who you're, who you are, I bet you can vouch for sales looked significantly different in 2020 than they do in 2023. So how can we get those 2020 sales? again um but the world has changed since 2020 and in a very very big way y'all y'all know changed financially it's changed relationally spiritually um it's changed a lot of ways in the last three years and so because the world has changed in 2020 i remember specifically in 2020 like i guess kind of after the height of the beginning of the panty people were saying, oh, we had to pivot. Like, oh, my business had to pivot. Like I was used to doing home parties and, and uh, live event, uh, vendor events and couldn't do those anymore. So I had to pivot my business and people weren't doing basket parties or bag parties anymore because they didn't want to touch anything of anybody else. So I really had to pivot my business. So we use that word a lot in 2020, but we're having to use it again now in 2023. We have to pivot again and there's a new direction to pivot in. We've got to adjust. We have to be flexible, flexible and innovative um, as a business owner, any business owner, but especially one where we are in social selling. Social selling is selling things through social media. Um, and we have to be willing to make changes too. So use the features that social media platforms roll out. They want you to use them. Um, and that's, you know, things like, um, again, Instagram and Facebook is what we're predominantly talking about, but you can carry this over other platforms stories, reels, carousel photos. If you don't know what a carousel photo is, if you're on Instagram, you can upload multiple photos in one post. So that way, if you've ever seen somebody's Instagram picture where you see the one picture, but then you can see the dots at the bottom, you can scroll, you can like flip through the pictures. That's a carousel photos. And they want you to use that. Yes, Instagram in 2021 and 2022 had really gone towards video with the reels, but they are now going back to more photos um, and carousels. So definitely make sure you're utilizing what they offer. And for some of you, that's scary. Some of you don't want to use stories and some of you don't want to make reels. I get it. But again, this is the pivot we're going to need to make. So this I wrote in very large letters because we have to stop selling in our content. Selling should happen in the conversations or the DMs. Again, I could post a picture of this, but because I'm sitting in my office, someone would buy Scentsy from me in 2020. They would say like, oh, yeah, Scentsy in the background. Oh, I need a place in order with her. It was so easy to sell. We can't do that anymore. You cannot post a picture. I don't even have anything on my desk. You cannot post a picture of counter clean and tell your customers or tell your audience, this stuff cleans my sneakers so well, it's $10 a bottle, you need some. We can't do that anymore. People are scrolling right past it. Instagram algorithms are not even posting it for you. They're not even sharing it to anyone for you. Um, we can't put a link anywhere because in, uh, Facebook and Instagram, they're going to hide it. You can't even click on links on Instagram if somebody puts it in their post anyway. You have to really be determined to like try to copy and paste that post or that link. We have to stop selling in our content. We have to stop saying, this is the most beautiful warmer I've ever seen, and it is $35. Or this is, the, this is the most awesome air purifier I've ever had, and you can get it for free and half off. Like, that's selling. And we've got to stop doing it. Because in 2023, people do not want to be sold to. They don't want to be sold to anymore. We get 
bombarded with sales all day long. I mean, open your Facebook app right now. How many ads are you going to be thrown at or thrown at you on Instagram? You're scrolling, you're seeing your friends' feeds, people you follow, and, and there's an ad, and there's an ad, and there's an ad. You're watching reels or TikToks, and you go through like two or three, and then all of a sudden there's an ad that you didn't ask for. Turn on the television commercial, ad, ad, ad. Everything is an ad. People don't want to be sold to, okay? So when you're making content and you want to sell something to someone or recruit someone, delete the post. Do not press post. Don't post it. If your sole intent for a picture that you're getting ready to show, the words you've typed out, if, it, if your sole intent is to make a sale, make money, recruit someone to your team, do not post it. Don't ask anybody to buy or host a party. In, in your post now, in your post. <laughs> I'm not saying don't ask people to host a party with you, but that happens in the DMs. In your content, don't ask anybody to buy or host. Don't share your links. Don't ask anybody to join your team. And yes, 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 I am guilty of every single one of these things. I'm sharing with you guys this stuff here tonight because I'm walking through it right now too. I am going through this stuff too. I am making this mindset business shift pivot myself. And I want to share it with y'all because I don't want y'all to get left in the dark when y'all are still out here selling all the things in your content and Facebook ain't even showing your audience what you're posting because they see it as a sales ad. And and I've got some big secret that I know that I've learned how to share better on social media. And I don't know, I'm going to tell y'all. Of course, I'm going to tell you. That's why we're having this conversation right now. I'm guilty of doing all of these things. I'm guilty of saying, join my team, host a party, this warmer cost $35. Like I'm guilty of doing all of that too. And there's a time and place for that, but your social media content's not in the place. I'm just saying. In 2023, you need to be authentic and relatable. One of our core principal values with Sensi since they opened their doors in 2004 has been authenticity, simplicity, and generosity. Be authentic and be relatable. That's how you're going to make connections with people on social media. There's no more time for curated, perfect posts and perfect photos. Instagram used to be the photo sharing app where really you had to take the prettiest picture, use the best filters on your pictures for them to get noticed. That, that's not the case anymore. Nobody cares about that. Folks like the messy and they can relate to it. Your goal is to become their trusted advisor not their Sears catalog, their trusted advisor. What about in your VIP group? Post things coming up or available. Good question. Um, I don't have a VIP group anymore. I just use my, my Facebook business page and then I have a personal Facebook and a personal Instagram. Um, that's my personal choice. You do, you do, you boo. However, I do have a weekly VIP text list and I have a landing page. It's called a landing page. When I send you guys the state of the group email every month, um, it has a link in there that you can click on it. And that link is literally, I've curated something for our entire group and I edit it every month. I do that for my customers too, but every week. And yes, I do share with them things that are coming out. Yes, I do share with them how much it costs. But before that, and in addition to those things, when they first click on my landing page, they get to see some valuable content, a product hack, um, something that's going on in my life, um, uh, user-generated content, and we'll talk about that in a second. Various things before I say, and coming soon is this, and I show them pictures and prices and explanations, okay? So not saying don't do it in a VIP group, because that is more like your, what's the word, like your room, I guess, that they've, they've come into. So because they came into your room, you can share with them what you want in there. But on in your content, even though if you do have a private uh, social media and only your friends can see things, you're, it's still like a public audience and they still don't want to be sold to. realistic look. Yes, Molly, 
Good. Okay. Creating your own content is fantastic too. All right. <clears throat> if the product alone were enough, if Scentsy products alone were enough, if they were good enough, which they are good enough, Scentsy would not need you or me to help them sell it. It is good enough. And Scentsy really doesn't need us to sell their product. They could probably get picked up tomorrow by some company to sell it in an in, in-store place. But that's not the business model that Scentsy chose. Scentsy chose direct sales. They chose consultants. They chose us to be their marketers. We don't have commercials. We don't have ads. We have, Scentsy has their own social media. And then they have their consultants. We are their advertisements. So be you in your content and in your conversations. Be you. Don't be Scentsy. Scentsy's already Scentsy. They have their own social media. Don't be Scentsy. Be you. Your content should be posted in a way that invites conversation in the private messages. One of those ways is, <laughs> what's one question most people ask when these, they see a beautiful warmer that they want? What's the question they ask first, mostly? How much is that? <laughs> okay. Invite that conversation to happen in the DMs and not on your post, not in the picture. Don't just give them the information for free. Delay the ask and the sale um, in those conversations for as long as you can, especially if you're super excited. Who doesn't get super excited when you get a message from a friend you haven't talked to in like three years and they're like, girl, what's this, what's coastal sunset smell like? I need to place an order. I mean, I immediately am like, oh my gosh, like I get so excited. Who doesn't? I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years and I get just excited, excited today when a customer places an order with me as I did the very first order I ever got, I get so excited and I immediately am like, oh girl, let me do this, 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 this. and I start telling them all the things and you need to try this and you got it. And, and I'm selling, 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 selling. But when we can delay the ask, and what I mean by delay the ask is that girl who comes in my inbox saying, what does coastal sunset smell like? I can reply back to her and be like, well, first of all, it's my number one summer scent. It's, very cozy for summertime, which I know is not a great word to use at summertime. It's, it's just comforting. It's slightly tropical. It makes me feel like I'm almost at the beach, but I'm still in my home. And also it's coastal sunsets. Best friend is mountain sunset. And I feel like if you're going to smell coastal sunset, you probably need to smell mountain sunset too. That's not really me selling. That's me sharing with her that what my personal thoughts. And instead of me saying, this is what it smells like, give them the description from the catalog. This is what it smells like. And you can get three for $17 or six for $30. Or this is what it smells like. How many can I get you? Delay the ask, talk to them about their needs, about their scent preferences, what other suggestions you can make them? Can you send them samples? I have one girl, I've been talking with her for two weeks and I followed back up with her. We were talking about, this is the Coastal Sunset Girl. We we're talking back and forth about it and some other, she's like, I really need some other scent suggestions. I don't like foodie scents. I really don't like florals. So what can you suggest for me? I'm like, girl, I got you. Let's, let's look at this. Well, I started handing her out or giving her suggestions. Well, I didn't hear from her for a couple of days and I was busy too. And then I thought of her one day and I was like, oh man, I need to message her. So I messaged her, I was like, hey girl, I am so sorry I have been out of touch. I have not forgotten about you. Are you still interested in Coastal Sunset? And she's like, yes, I'm so sorry. Life's been crazy. And she was like, but I was at my sister's house this weekend and I guess she's got like a tester kit or something, but I was able to smell some, but Coastal Sunset wasn't in there. And, but I still want to order from you. And I was like, well, thank you. I appreciate that. But please, she's like, I'm going to order today. I said, no, no, you're not. You are not. I'm going to do what I should have done for you last week. I'm going to go ahead and send you some samples today in the mail. Do not order until you get that package. And she was like, no, it's okay. I said, no, no. So I sent her some things. She got the package. I messaged her a couple of days later. And I said, did you get the package? She's like, yes, I got it today. And I'm so excited. I'm going to put together my order. I love this. And I love this. Well, they were two brick scents. One was a brick or two were brick scents. And one was from the mango collection. And I said, listen, these are limited time offers. And I know these are totally up your alley. I expected 100% for you to like them. It may be best if you put them in a club account because you can get them, number one, in bar form, and number two, you can get them forever. And she was like, Sensi Club? I thought I read about that. Tell me more about it. So I started telling her more about it. So anyway, I, I digress. I'm getting way off the topic, but I'm telling you, 
it's so easy to get super excited and sell immediately when someone messages you or wants to know the cost of something or wants to try not to go in for the kill immediately. Okay. This is building that relationship. This is you becoming that trusted advisor. Social content tips. Okay. This is where you bring out your pen and paper. All right. So social content, content tips, for whatever platform you're on, use user generated content. UGC is going to be a new term that you're going to hear a lot in anyone who is training on social media content um, from the professionals who know what they're talking about, not me. User-generated content is the user, the person who uses it, their content. So when you ask your customers to snap a picture of what they got or where they've set up their warmer, that's UGC, user-generated content. If you ask your customer for a review and ask them, can you use their review? That's UGC. You can use their, their content, give them credit, tag them, but do not add a link or ask for a sale of any kind in their content. If you do that to their content, or even if you ask, can I borrow that picture and post it on my social media and tag you? And they say, sure. And you say, look at the Simply Diamond Warmer in my customer, Susie Joe's house. Isn't it just perfect there? It is only $30 and it is an element warmer. Da, 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 da. Here's my link. You just took that user-generated content and turned it into a sales pitch, a sales promotion for yourself. So don't do that. User-generated content is going to, we'll talk about it in a minute, but it's going to build trust from your audience. What time is it? Oh my gosh, I need to pay attention. Oh gosh, okay. So um, be authentically you. We've talked about that already. Share the behind the scenes in your stories or posts. It builds trust when you show your face. So many of you all are too scared to show your face. And I'm telling you, I don't care if you have to, if you feel like you need to do your makeup. I used to do it several years ago. Several years ago, I used to feel like I could not put a picture on Facebook or when stories first became a thing in 2018, I remember I, that like one of the very first times I ever used stories on Facebook or on Instagram, anyway, one of the platforms, we were at SFR in Anaheim, California. And I was like, stories, what's the thing? And I was like filming the water, the waves. Anyway, I used to be so afraid to post on any social media when my face wasn't done up, when I didn't have makeup on, whatever. I literally wear makeup like once a week. I have makeup on today because I was in public for a really long time and I just wanted to dress nicely. But usually, usually it's for church on Sundays and that's it. Show your face. Show who you are. Show your messy life. That doesn't mean you have to be doom and gloom all the time when you've had the worst day ever. But being, tr being truly authentic and letting people know that, yeah, you have bad days too. Yeah, uh, like for instance, I, I'm making a reel for my business page that I'm going to post tomorrow where I tried to use our bathroom cleaner to clean a um, stain on my couch. The other morning I was eating um, toast with butter and jelly on it and it was on a napkin and I set it down on the arm of my couch and the butter soaked through and got on the couch. So I have an oil stain on my couch now. And I'm like, crap, I can get it out with Blue Dawn. Blue Dawn is like a miracle worker. But anyway, I was like, let me see if a uh, bathroom cleaner will take it out. Well, spoiler alert, it doesn't take the oil stain out, but I've made an entire reel about it. And my reel is going to be basically, is going to say that vacuum cleaner is great, but it doesn't take the oil stains out of my couch. And that's okay. That's okay to show that side of our products. Our products don't heal everything or fix every single thing. And it's okay. It's okay if your house is a complete wreck. It's okay if you walk into your house today for the first time in eight hours and it stinks. And I'm a Scentsy consultant. There was not one single warmer on in my house today. <laughs> it's embarrassing to admit. But I can tell my audience that because no one's perfect. Use the reels. Um, reels create trust faster than pictures and posts. And your reel... Um, oh, yes, Brittany, yes. Um, the reels... If you need to make a real, like the one I'm doing with the bathroom cleaner for tomorrow, I'm not in it at all. My face is not in it at all. It's literally my couch and the bathroom cleaner and a, a rag. Just start. Just start creating content. And it doesn't have to be product content. It can, but it doesn't have to be product content. That's the thing is I feel like a lot of times when we talk about social media because we are in Scentsy, y'all think I'm talking about product. And sometimes I am, yes, but your social media content, people want to know, like, and trust you, right? Know, like, and trust. Well, they can't know, like, and trust you if you're only sharing Cincy Counterclean 
and since and you changing your scentsy wax all the time. They want to know about your life. They want to know that you have horses and chickens and they want to know that you uh, ride bikes on the weekends. They want to know that you like hiking. They want to know that you are a shopaholic city girl through and through. Like they want to see these things. That's how you build trust. With reels, even on TikTok or whatever, viral should not be your goal. Don't make a reel or don't think you can't make a reel because it'll never go viral or you'll never get 10,000 followers on Instagram or TikTok. That's not your goal. Your goal is to create value content, which is the next tip. Value content is educational content. It's product hacks. It's how to's. When I talk about making reels, you know how many times I've made a reel changing my wax? Oh my God, so many times. And some of them get like 30 views. And then some of them get like 5,000 views. And I'm like, how? I share this all the time. <laughs> but reuse your content. That's another tip. Reuse your content. Don't be afraid to share you changing your wax every single flipping Wednesday. It's Wax Change Wednesday. Here we go again. Here I am with cotton cleanups again. Here I am with cotton balls again. Oh my God, we're running out of time. Okay. Um, so teach your customers something through educational content, product hacks, how to's, your life, whatever you've got going on. And it, again, it doesn't have to be sensory related. If you're a horse person, like show them something related to horses that you do or that you know about. Um, value, serve, nurture, and sell. That is the that is the sequence of events. Provide value, serve them in the DMs, nurture your relationship, then sell to them. Three social media tips that you can use. Optimize your bio, whether this is Facebook or Instagram. When I read this training, this was specific to Instagram, but it said um, to, I'm going to pull up my Instagram so I can show you guys. My, and I will go ahead and be the first to admit that my Instagram is not Sensi related. It is, it's me. It's my life. Um, since he's in it sometimes, but it's more or less homesteading, homemaking, gardening, chickens. Very rarely any sensey. But what I wanted to show you guys is when it says optimize your bio. So that's the, y'all probably not going to be able to see this. Where is my camera? Can I get some color? I mean, some lighting. Oh man, you're not going to see this. Oh, there we are. Okay, so this is your bio in here. One thing that people don't realize is that your name field where it's bold, this is actually the SEO search. Why is that flashing up there where my camera is? That's creepy, actually. That's really creepy that my camera is flashing because it is not on right now. Okay, anyway, I digress. Um, so the name line is actually where the SEO, that's the search engine optimization, looks. Oh, my camera on. So whatever you have here is what people are searching. So if you have a public account, and if you don't do public, that's fine. But if you have a public account, this is where your information would need to be um, like something searchable because nobody's going to be searching for Katie C. Johnson. But you think that that's what you should put there because that's your name. But it should be something about like who you are, what you do. Um, <clears throat> it should be what you offer people. And... Your photo needs to be your face, and it would be great if it matched your PWS. So my business page on Facebook, that picture always matches my PWS. Um, the name field, again, is the search engine. And then, so my name is actually in the bio part. My full name is actually in the bio part down here. And then, of course, I've got my link tree. Um, so another social media tip, it says respond with, with words, not just the reactions, the hearts, the likes, whatever, but respond with words to at least 20 stories every time you're on social. That feels a little excessive to me because I'm not even sure I watch 20 stories in a, in a day, um, much less every time I open the social media app, but that's just the suggestion um, that was given in one of the trainings I listened to recently. And the reason is when you respond with words, you have to type and it goes directly to their DMs. So you all can start a conversation. Now here, we're, see where I'm going with that? Start a conversation. Um, and it's also building trust and, connect, and making connections and relationships with people um, that you can work on later. So leverage that UGC, that user-generated content, when you ask your customers for things. This also saves time when you use other people's, your customers' content. Um, tagging expands content reach to new people. Um, when you tag them and they tag you, other people get to see who you are. This provides, provides quote, social proof to your audience that you're a good consultant when someone else is 
posting pictures and tagging you or letting you share their content, that's showing your audience that like, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm legit at what I do. Um, so how do you get user generated content? Ask for it, <laughs> ask your customers for it and you don't have to bribe them. I used to do take and tags and I would tell my customers every time you took a picture and tagged me on social media, I would put your name in a drawing for the month. Um, that was okay to do because I wasn't asking anybody to pay for anything. I wasn't asking them anyway. So it was okay for me to do, but no one was doing it. They were tagging me. Some people were tagging me, but a lot of people were not. Um, I actually found that more people tagged me when I stopped putting that flyer in my orders than when I did have it in my orders. Um, so just ask and you don't have to, and you don't have to bribe them. We miss the mark as social sellers. We miss the mark by trying to sell in our content and then build the relationship and the trust. It, that's not the way we do it in 2023. We have to have that relationship and trust first before we can try to sell anybody on anything. We also miss the mark when we don't know exactly who we are talking to. This is big. And this is so hard for people to get through. And this is a whole training in and of itself. I had a pretty big breakthrough last night in a separate training and coaching. <laughs> but I'm just here to tell you that in when I say talking to, this is your social content. Who are you talking to in your social content? And so, so many people think that what well, social media content? I'm talking to my entire audience. So, hey, guys. Hey, y'all. Stop talking like that. I learned that a couple of years ago. Don't Don't talk to your audience as if it's a bunch of people, talk to them like it's one person. There's one girl I follow where she calls everybody her bestie. She's like, hey, bestie. So whenever I read her posts or whenever she's on stories, it sounds like she's talking to me, not to her 23,000 followers. So that's important. So know who it is you're talking to. Hint, this man or woman is just like you. So who are you? What do you want? What is life like right now? What are your strengths? What are your fears? Because there are so many more people out there like you, but you haven't found them yet because you have not put yourself out there yet. Truly, authentically, you. So talk to that person in your content because in 2023, relationships will come first is it and I did it with three minutes to spare <laughs> does anybody have any questions about that I kind of threw a lot at you guys and again for the record this is something that I am learning too as I'm sharing it with you all um so it's not anything that I've perfected I will just share um that I have been implementing some of this for a while now um and like I said about the person who messaged me about Coastal Sunset, in the last 60 days, I have had more returning customers, and I mean returning from years past, five, six, seven years ago, are coming back to me and new customers I've never had before. And I'm looking at who these customers are and I'm thinking, we have been friends since Facebook existed. And you have known that I sell Scentsy for the last 10 years. What's making you purchase Scentsy now? And why me? Like, these are the questions I'm asking myself when these people come to me. And I think it, I really think it just has a lot to do with how I'm showing up on social media now. And that's, it's, I'm showing up in a way by showing people what I'm interested in. And it's not what everybody else is interested in. But I'm not, I'm not people pleasing anymore. I'm not sharing on social media just to be likable, just to get someone to press the like button or to get them to laugh and comment about it. I'm sharing what I'm interested in because I'm talking to the me's, the Katie, the other Katie's out there that have the same interests that I have, who have the same values that I have, who have the same mission that I have who are basically just like me. And I know a lot of people are going to balk at that because they're like, but Scentsy's for everybody. But, but I can be friends with everybody. And you're right. You can be kind and be friends with everybody. But just hear me when I say that 
yes, we sell a product that, that in, literally anybody in the world can use. Anybody can use Scentsy. Male, woman, doesn't, man, woman, doesn't matter. Like, anybody can use Scentsy. Children, pets, name it. We can make it smell good. But when you're talking to that many people at one time, it's so confusing. It's so confusing. So show up on your social media authentically you. Be real. Show the messy. And talk to that person who is you. Talk to you. Talk to your bestie on the other side of the screen. Like it's the only person that you're talking to. And that's all I got for y'all. I don't know if you'll take some or you'll trash some. or It's fine. But in 2023, we have to show up in a totally different way. Our relationships are going to have to come first. Stop selling in your content. Sell in the conversations and delay that ask as long as possible. Y'all have a fantastic night. Thank y'all for being here and showing up. Love y'all. Mean it. Bye.